Before Fawe picked me as a struggling girl, as really struggling, as about to give up. How? We lost our parents when we were still young. We never had a chance to live with them. So life started and became tough when, we, when our home was sold by our relatives. So we never had even a home. So I had uh, a number of challenges and having grown up as an orphan who was uh, being taken care of by my grandmother, at that time she had become old and blind and was unable to support me. And I had studied really on assistance of a number of well-wishers, but at that point it was too much and the money had accumulated. And actually the school I was at Colorises and the school was letting me go because uh, from all indications, it wasn't possible that I would be able to clear this huge fees uh, bill. I tried to sell banana leaves, but the money was very little because I would sell four of them at 50 shillings and it would not be enough. I started roasting chicken and children nicknamed me at school chicken and they would laugh at me all the time. But for me, I took up that name because I had no choice. That was my only way of keeping in school. But it was really, really a struggle. Then they, they wrote about me in the newspapers. Journalists wrote about me in the newspapers. And then the, that time, the Fawe Chair person read about me. So Fawe gave me a chance to get a bursary and I left the roadside. Today it's history. It's a different story. It came at a time, a critical moment, that if it was not there, I could have lost all the other investments that other actors had put my relatives would have been lost at that point because that was a turning moment for me. It gave me an opportunity to complete school, be able to grow into a career, but they also gave me a stepping stone in terms of the professional life, in terms of experience. FAWE is a Pan-African organization that was started in 1992 by five African, by five African women ministers of education and uh, the aspect was really to promote gender equality, equity in education. And so FAWE Uganda was formed in 1997, and we, our mandate is really to see how we can promote girls' education, girls' participation and completion of education, and become um, useful citizens. Being born a girl child, I was privileged to go through education to the highest level I could attain. And it so happened that I was the first girl child to reach a level in my sub-county to the extent that the neighborhood or the people who were here they would come to see who is this girl. So that inspired me to say, oh, if they think I'm a girl, I can't reach higher, then I'm even going to go higher. And as a result of that, we went to university successfully, and I happened to be one of the first members of our Uganda, because our Uganda started in 1997 by Dr. Jenny Murema, or the other fellow ladies at the university. So by 1996, when I became the chairperson of the Uganda Association of University Women, uh, we had done a bit of research, and definitely the gender gap was very glaring in Uganda, starting with ourselves as an example. And therefore, we had the objective of uh, closing that gender gap between men and women 
at university level. But then, of course, you cannot close a gap at university level when you have not attempted to close the gap through the education system. So, as the Uganda Association of University Women, we recognize that if we became a, a faraway chapter, because at that time there were relatively few countries that have had formed chapters, we would be able to benefit better from the regional faraway guidance and funding. You may say that the real initial founders of the Fawe Uganda chapter were five people. Myself as the chairperson of the Uganda Association of University Women. My deputy, by then she was Miss Maria Goretti Mosoke. She's now a professor. Then we, the two of us employed a lady She's Honorable Wanyoto, Member of Parliament. And uh, to, to help us carry out some of the activities. And we had a few other members. We had a lady, we, in, we, we invited the media to help us do the publication of our ideas. And the lady is called Jipola. By that time she was called Jipola, I forget her second name. But, so that is the initial group that really started digesting this idea to help us host what we later called a proper founding meeting. And we invited NGOs, heads of institutions like uh, secondary schools, participate in that meeting and I think we were about 32 that participated in that meeting which we later said this should be the founding meeting for the Fawe Uganda chapter. Given that we started in 1997 we have supported a lot of girls, a lot of young people in school and I must say that we are proud that out of that support, uh, you know, we have touched directly uh, over 8,000, that is through scholarships and bursaries. And out of those 8,000, there are so many who are in high offices, you know, in this country. So they are actually contributing to, to, the, to development, to growth. And that actually is what we have been looking to. We have uh, young people, I mean, girls, ladies in parliament, we have those who are engineers, we have doctors, we have teachers. Also to add, because the girls are not individuals in themselves, they come with families. We have reached out to different uh, families and communities, you know, to sensitize them on various aspects uh, of livelihood, uh, you know, health matters, um, community development issues, uh, you know, GBV, uh, prevention, you know, protection. So we have reached out to a varied number of communities, uh, you know, amounting to millions of, of women, men, young people, and we have touched people, we have changed lives. Um, I can say that uh, out of the, you know, reaching out to advocacy, you know, radio programs, TV programs, uh, media engagement generally, uh, lives have changed, people have begun to appreciate, you know, gender issues, people have begun to appreciate the aspect that education is important and critical in the lives of their children. So we have made uh, changes in, in communities. The fact that FAWE addresses the needs of the most vulnerable girl, the most vulnerable, they go to where you come from, they check your background, they even see your situation. If you are somewhere uh, in the middle class, if your parents can afford, no, that is not a concern. Trying to build an all-round Uganda for all of us. Two, the advocacy for the girl child is so valid, is so loud. By the way, family does not only stop with advocacy in schools. No, they even try to get the parents on board. 
how the teachers should manage girls. So this is not a simple journey. How many organizations are there to do this? What, one thing I want to appreciate about Fawe, that time when they would bring your children to sponsor in the, in the, in, in the school, Fawe plays a parental role. Hmm? They become a partner of the school. They participate in enhancing quality in that school. How? Because I was surprised when they brought children, there were about five children, the next thing I saw, they were arriving with boxes of textbooks. And I would say, wow. So they, they don't only bring children to, be, to study in the school, they also want to see that the education quality is enhanced in that school. So an opportunity to support and turn around lives of young people is something that has become a passion, especially because oftentimes girls are very disadvantaged. So the issue is one little thing can turn around the life. The scholarship basically did like a, a total turn for me. Um, I was this girl who was giving up on school, yet I had a big dream of becoming a doctor and treating the sick. And at that point when I was dropping out of school, I got this life-changing scholarship that kept me in a very good school, like the best school in this country, King's College Bido. And um, from there I was able to realize my dream of becoming a doctor. So it, it, this scholarship took me from a place of being disadvantaged, where you don't have a voice, where you are, uh, you're not respected, you're not, like, that when someone is describing you, they use particular words, to another place where I'm a useful member of the society, uh, where I'm also able to give back to community by treating the sick. Um, so I, it, it totally changed my life. If I, had, if I had missed that scholarship, that would be the end for me. I would not be the doctor I am today. I would not be as confident as I am today. I would not be advocating for girl child education as I do today. No one, no one would be looking for me. No one would know my name. I would probably have um, 16 children. <laughs> yeah, so clearly, for it, this scholarship just shaped my, my future and made it brighter and made it more meaningful and useful. In the holidays, I would go back home, sell things in the market, pancakes, drinks, in the market, in the small, small bars there, to collect money to be able to pay for the secondary school education. That was before Fawe came. But when Fawe came on board, instead of doing, doing those those other things of getting extra money, I would spend most of the time reading books at home and also, of course, doing housework here and there. But I used that time, I saved the time to read books and it greatly helped me to perform well at Senior 4 and Senior 6. Because of of my scholarship that I got from FAWE and the education I've gone through the gates of FAWE, I am a different grace. I am no longer the chicken girl they used to laugh at. Even the people who used to laugh at me now admire me because I have moved the world. I have supported, first of all, I've supported myself as grace, uh, who I evicted and always, I always wanted to have a home. Today we have a Mwamba home, very beautiful home. My children are able to study. They are in first world schools and I'm very glad. And that is Namagunga, Namiliango, and I'm very happy. But also my siblings have been able to excel because of me, I have supported them. And I just want to say thank you so much to Fawe Uganda for the opportunity you by by 
supporting me and many other girls, but I speak uh, for myself by supporting me. You did not only support me, you brightened me up and, and opened up my mind to, to help other girls as well. Right now I'm supporting a few, apart from a few of my family members, I'm supporting a few girls that I am not related to, to make sure that they are also empowered the way I was empowered. Thank you so much for supporting the girl child. Um, it's usually said that educate a girl and educate a nation. That's, that's a very um, correct statement. Thank you so much. And I, I hope that FAO continues. I pray and believe that FAO continues and that so many other people join FAO. Um, because a, like a few years ago, I was in a totally different place, just like another girl out there who, who might be crying, who might be disadvantaged, and they're just looking for an opportunity to go to school and they become a better member of the society. So long live Fawe.